Neanderthals remain one of the great mysteries of human evolution. They are the human's closest relatives, but their habits elude us. We are learning more about our hominid cousins every day, but there is still so much we do not know, including the mystery of Neanderthal mating habits, as there is not a lot of evidence to describe what Neanderthal sex would have been like. Thankfully there are new advances in genetic paleontology shining a light on this elusive subject, and the discoveries surrounding ancient human mating rituals continue to develop. Prehistoric intercourse was complicated, especially when navigating a mating scene that spanned multiple different hominid species. Scientists have uncovered proof that humans and Neanderthals likely mated with each other, and we're still feeling the effects of that crossbreeding today. Let's dive into what the sex lives of Neanderthals really looked like. Humans definitely slept with Neanderthals. Even though modern humans and Neanderthals are completely different species, that did not stop the two from hooking up. We know for a fact humans and Neanderthals had intercourse with one another, as revealed with DNA testing. A genetic analysis run on the remains of a 40,000-year-old human uncovered that 11% of his genome wasn't actually human, but Neanderthal. It's the highest concentration of Neanderthal DNA ever found in a human. There are even people alive today who have remnants of Neanderthal in their genes. A key observation is that the proportion of Neanderthal ancestry is 12 to 20 percent higher in East Asian individuals relative to European individuals. Neanderthals transmitted dangerous genes that affect human genitalia. It's impossible to say for certain whether it was mostly female Neanderthals scoring with early modern human males, or the other way around, but there are some clues. The researchers say there is evidence of strong gene flow between Neanderthals and early modern humans, they were interbreeding rather a lot. So often, in fact, that as Neanderthal numbers dwindled towards the end of their existence, their Y chromosomes may have gone extinct and been replaced entirely with our own. This suggests that a substantial number of ancestral human men were having sex with female Neanderthals as it turns out. Neanderthals passed on certain genes that can cause ulcers to generate on human genitalia. People with the Neanderthal gene HLAB-51 are more likely to develop Bersay's disease, a condition that has several side effects like ulcers on the mouths and genitalia, inflammation, and blindness. Bersay's isn't the only condition linked to Neanderthal DNA, Crohn's disease, lupus, and diabetes are all ailments that are influenced by the remnants of ancient DNA. In fact, sex with Neanderthals might have left us with a number of other viruses, including an ancient relative of HIV. But there's no need to feel resentful towards our long-lost relatives, because there's also evidence that we gave them STDs, including herpes. Incest and inbreeding were a normal part of Neanderthal life, some evidence to suggest that Neanderthals did sleep around more than modern humans. Neanderthals and modern humans differ in many ways. And one of the most severe differences is our perspective on relationships with close relatives. A female Neanderthal toe bone was discovered in a Siberian cave, and a genetic analysis uncovered the Neanderthal's parents were actually close relatives. It's likely the parents were half-siblings, an aunt and her nephew, or vice versa. Scientists confirmed the level of inbreeding in this particular specimen was unusually high for any species. Suggesting this was far from a fluke incident, Neanderthals mated with humans for thousands of years. Interbreeding between humans and Neanderthals was not an isolated occurrence. According to various DNA evidence, it appears this interspecies love affair was ongoing since at least 100,000 years ago. The two species mingled and mixed for an estimated 60,000 years, producing fertile offspring whose genetic lineage continues to this day. It is believed thousands of these couplings happened over the course of this timeline. This revelation actually revolutionized our knowledge of our own history, and made it clear that Homo sapiens must have left Africa earlier than we thought. Since Neanderthals never lived in Africa, evidence of human, Neanderthal mixing proves humans migrated to Eurasia at least 100,000 years ago. Neanderthal genitals were the same size as our own, Neanderthal males were found to have members similar in size to our own. Unlike many other primates, who have proportionally small male genitalia, humans have relatively large members. By comparing our DNA, scientists have determined that Neanderthal penises were likely indistinguishable from our own. 
This makes sense given the amount of inbreeding between the two species and further confirms that our genitalia was compatible with theirs. The Neanderthals may have sexed themselves to extinction the Neanderthals are gone, and paleontologists have spent decades trying to figure out what happened. Some theories put the blame on climate change, while others blame human invaders for wiping out our closest relatives. There is another hypothesis floating around. It's possible the Neanderthals never actually died out, but in fact just blended with us. They may have sexed themselves out of existence by mating with another species. It's likely interspecies intercourse wasn't always consensual. It is highly likely sexual relations between humans and Neanderthals was not consensual, and interspecies rape was just another part of prehistoric life. Communication between the species would have been difficult, meaning it's unlikely the two hominids hooked up by choice. If this was the case, then it could be evidence that humans and Neanderthals had a violent relationship, one that would end with humans as the sole survivors. Despite our best efforts, we still don't know much about Neanderthal despite plenty of genetic evidence revealing many of the mysteries left behind by the disappearance of Neanderthals, we still don't know much about their actual personal lives. We do know they mingled with humans, but we're not sure under what conditions or exactly how often that happened. We don't know what the actual act might have looked like, although we can assume it would be fairly similar to modern human intercourse. Maybe with time we will learn more about the lives of Neanderthals. What are some interesting facts you know about Neanderthals?